for three. All right, it's recording. You're live. Uh, thank you, everyone. We're going to call to order um, the April 8th meeting of the advisory or the technical advisory committee of the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority. Um, can we have a roll call, please? Absolutely. Uh, Bolinas Fire. Steve Mark out here for Bolinas Fire. Thank you, Steve. San Rafael Fire. Here, Bob Senate. Thank you. Central Marin Fire. Or Corte uh, Madera is actually the Corte Madera. Corte Madera, Madera, Madera here. <laughs> so, County, County Fire. And Jordan's here, Jordan Reeser. Thank you, Jordan. Kentfield Fire. Larry Pacer for Kentfield Fire. Thank you. We did get word that uh, David Taylor from Muir Beach would not be here today. Uh, Nevada Fire. Lynn Osgood here from Nevada Fire. Thank you. Sleepy Hollow Fire Protection District. Southern Rain Fire. Right here, you Southern Rain Fire. Excellent. Jesse Perry, you I saw you, right? Jesse's here, Stinson Beach. Thank you. And then Todd Lando for the other half of Central Marin slash <laughs> Lark's Court of Malarkey. Court of Madera. Court of Madera. Court of Malarkey, sorry. Fairfax. Do we have Fairfax today? Ross Valley Fire. Rob, we got you today, right? Present. All right, actually, that's the town of Ross. And then the yeah, town, town of San Elmo. Here. Thank you, Sean. Uh, we have a, a quorum minus two members. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Um, item number three, are there any adjustments to today's um, agenda? Um, Ruben, I do have one. Somehow, while creating the um, agenda packet in Granicus, we deleted public comment. So I asked that we add uh, public comment after agenda adjustments and prior to the executive officer's report. Okay, that uh, adjustment has been made. Um, any other adjustments? Seeing none, um, we'll move on to uh, public comment. Um, this is an opportunity for members of the, of the public to uh, bring forward any items that are not on the agenda for today's meeting. And we'll try to limit our comments to uh, three minutes apiece. Do and I am looking for any raised hands. And for the one call in person that we have, if you hit star nine, that'll raise your hand. And still looking for raised hands. And I see no raised hands. Okay, seeing none, we will move, uh, we'll bring it back to, um, to the ATC. And then moving on to um, item number four, this is uh, executive officer's report. And I'll, I'll keep it really brief for you guys so you can get to work. Um, at the executive committee, and I to do it again at the director's meeting, I gave a presentation on um, what the predictive services out of North Ops is saying for the fire forecast. Um, short story is that they're, they've stopped short of saying this is going to be the worst fire season ever. However, they're setting the stage for basically saying that in the future, especially with the predicted rain. The live fuel moistures are not at historic low levels now, but with the lack of rain that we've had in, in spring, uh, the, the rate of decline of those fuel moistures are likely to um, bring us down to historical levels. Um, but the other side of the coin is there's a very small grass crop out there um, in comparison to previous years. So we won't have the fine fuels necessarily to carry into the heavy fuels but once we do get a fire established in the heavy fuels, that's when we are going to have our potential. Um, uh, not much of an update to give for the executive committee and board of directors recently. We've been working hard on goals, values. Um, and at the uh, April 15th meeting, we hope to have our goals and values approved and our mission statement and values, our uh, vision statement were approved at the last meeting. Citizens Oversight Committee has been working hard. They have their draft bylaws and now they're moving into creating their policies and procedures. And the Finance Committee has been sitting idle until we get the work plan. We have the budget framework created. And when we get the approved work plan from operations, that's when we'll put the finishing touches on that. And we are down to two candidates, two well-qualified candidates for our planning and program manager. 
and we are entering into the final phase of the background investigation before we can offer a uh, full offer of employment to one of our candidates. But um, both of them are high quality candidates. And with that, I'll take any questions. All right, seeing no questions, uh, we'll move on to the next portion of the agenda, which is, um, let's see, item number five, which is uh, review the project work plans form. I know that's a kind of a big topic for us um, right now. Um, I wanna thank Lynn Osgood for putting in a lot of time um, into that form. Thank you, Lynn. Um, it's pretty comprehensive. Um, you know, it covers the environmental component that is required for using public dollars on, on private and or public lands. Um, so I'm gonna kind of turn it over to Lynn since she's the one who created the majority of the work on it and uh, let her present it and go through it, uh, I guess, item by item and then answer any questions that anyone may have. Okay, why don't I bring this up? Can I share my screen? You should have authority to do it on. Yeah, Zoom. I have it. Perfect. Let's see. Okay. Do you guys see that? Hold on. Yes. You can see it. You can see the form. Yes. yes. Okay. So um, I know you guys all probably want to kill me. Uh, I'm really sorry. <laughs> I tried to make it really simple and um, cover everything, and then it went off to the county for. Uh, second review for the CEQA compliance um, part of it. Um, I made some last minute changes. We don't have to keep those. Um, I know I've made a lot of changes. It's just that as people have begun to try to input information into them, they've called me. And so I've tried to accommodate what their needs were. Um, and so starting at the very top, you have a drop down. So whether you're Novato, San Rafael Central, a multi-agency project or fire safe Marin, you would click on that. Um, you know, was it going to be a core project? And then this is what I added was a number. So core project number one, because, you know, fire safe Marin, for example, has, you know, 17, 18 projects. So um, that's why I added that, that number, uh, number in there for tracking purposes. Um, our last project form had that. Um, so we can take that out if needed, um, if it's too much for everybody, because people probably started these already. Um, then project name, that speaks for itself pretty much, um, whatever the name of your project is. The lead agency and supporting agency. So if you are uh, combining your project with another agency, you'd want to add the supporting agency as well. And then, each area, so project description, keep it brief, bullet point it. Um, and you only have basically 5,000, um, um, I think letters that you can add in there are numbers. So um, if you can't fit everything in, I can go ahead and change it and make the font smaller, which I've done, I think it's like eight, so you can fit as much as you can, but just try to keep it brief and to the point. Um, and then project location speaks for itself. You can pull a lot of this information up either on Marin Map or Google Maps. And if you if it, if this is not, um, let's say you don't need the project location because you're doing an educational project, then just put NA. If it doesn't apply to your project, just put NA. And then the scope of work is really the 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 meat and potatoes of this um, form. And I've divided it up into different categories depending on what your project is. So the first one is the vegetation management and fire hazard reduction. So you don't need to fill this out if you are doing an education program. You would go directly to that education program. And each, each section pretty much describes what we would like you to have in your description. And once again, just keep it really brief and outline it into the point. So your goals, objectives, outcomes, 
Um, and I, what, what's really helpful, if you do everything in a Word document first and then you can cut and paste and add it, that might be easier for you too. Um, some of the stuff is the same as what was on the last. Um, and, you know, what are you going to do with your leftover, you know, woody biomass? So if, you're, if your project includes uh, chipping or if you're going to disperse, you'd want to put that in there. Um, and then describe how your compliance with the California Environmental Quality Act will be achieved. So that is just a place for you to, to describe what you're going to do. So for example, um, for Novato Fire, for each project that's a vegetation uh, project, we are going to hire an environmental consulting firm to conduct their environmental assessment. And then um, for projects that are detection, notification, and evacuation projects, you just fill out that section. And then for the grant management projects, you just fill out that section. And for like Fire Safe Marin, they're just going to be filling out the public education project section for the most part. Um, and then for section five, you have the expected outcomes for defensible space, home hardening programs. Um, and then number four, project maintenance plan. Um, that's your basic long-term maintenance. What's your plan for that? Are you gonna come back each year and do additional work if it's a vegetation? Um, are you gonna continue with more education projects that are, are the, the same as the year before, et cetera? Um, and then for the CWPP section, uh, most of us that just updated um, our projects in the CWPP um, or in the past CWPP from 2016, is there a relationship between your project and that CWPP? If it is, put yes. Um, or if it's if if a homeowners association, for example, has their own vegetation management plan from the past, you'd want to describe that in section B. And then your approximate start date, approximate completion date. And then the CEQA compliance is only for those ground disturbing projects. They're not for your education projects. So these, the, this section here, those projects that are education or anything other than the vegetation, you don't need to fill out. Um, now you would have to fill out the fire hazard severity zone for all the other projects communities at risk, and then describe how your proposal will create fire adaptive communities. These are pretty straightforward questions. And it actually, when you actually begin to fill it out, it's not as much as it seems like it is. Um, and then I, what I did was I changed the budget section. So in the past I had actual categories and here you can actually fill in what the category is. So that, those were my two latest changes the night. I wasn't going to put any more, but it, I, the old budget, um, Fire Safe Marin had a really difficult time um, with that. So I said I'd go ahead and just keep it general so people can fill it in instead. And then the additional questionnaire is just for the vegetation projects. Lynn, can we go back for a second? Sure. A question. Yeah. On the budget piece, um, when you talk about cost description, can you give an example? Yeah, absolutely. So um, let's say contractor services. So that could be the, um, the tree service, or um, if you're hiring somebody to write up a plan for your consultants, whoever you're contracting with, that would just be contracting services. Um, if you're buying equipment, it could be equipment. Um, et cetera, printing materials, um, whatever is in your budget for that program, you could add it in here. Perfect. Or Thank you could you. just, or if you wanted to, you could just bunch it all together. And I think Fire Safe Run is probably going to do something like that. Lynn or, or Ruben, can I ask a question now? You want to sure. wait for um, So I, I got these forms from you, Ruben, and um, I just, I mean, forgive me, but I haven't much time to look at them. And I just want yeah. to understand, like, it says they're for core projects, local mitigation, and defensible space. Um, I guess one of my questions is, you know, like, obviously, besides being on this committee, I represent the town of San Samuel. Um, and then there's Ross Valley. So who would fill out these forms? Like, like, lo like each, like the local and then fire department. How, 
how are these forms being used so, in different jurisdictions? Uh, I think that all depends on how you're allocating your funding. Like for example, I can give, tell you what Corn Madera and Larkspur do. They basically funnel or pass through all the MWPA core and defensible space funds to the fire department budget. And then we would then provide the work plans for the town and the city. And so I, think, we I think we're doing the same thing with, with the um, defensible space and the core, but local mitigation, like I've been working with Dom from the, from, the, okay. from the fire department who's been helping us with like, you know, roadway abatements and we've been mm -hmm. doing a bunch of projects here and there. But I guess this is also for future monies, right? Like next year, right? What yeah, so what I would do is, um, so this starts as your 2021, 22 work plans. So for that fiscal year. So I would probably work with Dom, have Dom identify where you're using your local mitigation dollars at. And then this is how you would submit the form for San and Selma. Okay, and, and then, um, and we're, so this is not next fiscal year, not this fiscal year. I'm just trying to keep that in my head. Yeah, it's 20, yeah. it's 21, 22. Yeah, it's always confusing and it's like I know. Really rolling over. Um, and then I guess one of my other questions is like, cause there's been a lot of talk, like right now we've been using it for abatements of, of roads and, and things like that, like, you know, limbs and, and plants and things. But what about, they talking talk about taking the local money and maybe using it for hardening of homes or other things. I mean, would we do the same thing? So we just have to decide locally what we want to do with the funds and then put it Correct. in. Correct. Long, right. As long as it falls under the, the intent of the MWPA, so defensible space, home hardening, uh, fuels mitigation and so forth, you would put it as uh, local mitigation dollars and you may go home hardening grants. And okay, because I have, I have an interesting one and maybe this is a topic and okay. I can bring this up later, but you know, as you know, in San Selma, I think all throughout Marin County, there's a lot of non-maintained roads. Yes. And, and, and so what, one of my questions I've been playing with is, you know, if, if you go into Sleepy Hollow, you only have Butterfield to get in and out of really, and kind of the Alameda, but the Alameda is not maintained and it's falling apart. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if local monies could help go along with town money and, and county money and other monies to help repair a road in theory for fire egress. Mm -hmm. that, I think I'll defer to, to uh, Mark Brown for that one. For the, for the improvement of the road infrastructure, it'll be hard to justify using MWPA funding for that. For the vegetation management along that roadway, absolutely. Right. But whether it's regrading, paving, gravel of the road, it would be hard to justify MWPA funds. But that's where, okay. you, like you said, if you partner with the um, town funds, the town maybe puts money towards the, the road infrastructure and MWPA funds are looking at hardening the, the vegetation um, safety. I guess when, when I think, and this is me, I'm, I'm always kind of outside of the box, forgive me, but like, like li literally we don't have a lot of, we usually only contribute 25% towards non-maintained. And there's a section of the Alameda that there's actually almost no homes up against, right? And we could abate the properties that are backing up to it, but they don't use the road, right? And it's falling apart. And to me, it seems like if you're really trying to improve egress, especially like from Sleepy Hollow where there's one road that's in and out, this would be the best way to spend funds is to make a road passable by a fire engine or any emergency equipment. So I'm just putting that out there and I can, I can play with that more later. Um, and I'm looking at like the county and, and a bunch and even getting the utilities to contribute funding. I'm just trying to piece something together. So right. I'll, I'll let that go for now. <laughs> so Sean, I think that, you know, that, that could be an interesting project. And like Mark said, if, if, if part of the project, like the NWPA would, would fund the vegetation clearance along the roadside. You know, you're 10 feet on both sides, limbing up trees, et cetera. And then uh, your city or town would pro provide some sort of match. So you could add the matching funds um, in the budget. And that would be a category, you know, matching funds from Sleepy Hollow or um, what have you, and then just and then just mention that in the scope of work. Okay. Yeah, okay. and so what you would probably do, I guess that would be considered central, for yeah. example. Would that be central, you guys? Yeah. Okay, yes. central. You could do central and or multi-agency. Um, and then, you know, your project name and then supporting agency may be, um, what would it be, uh, Sleepy Hollow or it's Sleepy Hollow and Ross Valley. It's in between two, like, you know. Right. 
So, I mean, that you can do it that way. Yeah, and, 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 I, and I know we, I, could, I would probably try to get the Sleepy Hollow to contribute money in the town and the county. Right, and, and then so. just make sure that when you create that description as you know, improving evacuation by you know, the vegetation clearance and, and, and providing um, a good road service for evacuation and access, you know, emergency access. Okay. And thank you, Sean. The, the challenge is, I, I get your, I understand your argument, but we have to stay true to the language that the voters voted on. Right. And um, the road infrastructure really doesn't fit into the description of what we can spend the money on. It's exactly. just the vegetation management around the road. Right. Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm being too logical. Like, if it doesn't matter if you have trees in the way, if you can't drive on the roads. <laughs> I hear you. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So I, I. So Mark. So if they if they provided the funding for the the road service and the road repair, and then the MWPA provided the funding for the actual vegetation, do you think that, that would could work? work? That could work for us. That, yeah. To me, that falls within the parameters of the JPA language. Okay. Another component, Sean, um, that falls kind of on the public wor works world would be, for instance, uh, there's certain areas um, like Frost Rock and areas up of Scenic and so forth where, and even Redwood going up in San Anselmo where um, roadway widths are an issue and parking is an issue there. We're putting parking boxes in. And I believe if I'm correct, Mark, MWPA funds can be used to identify parking boxes where you can improve roadways widths and so on that end. Yeah, the evacuation study will, we feel, will help identify locations that need the parking boxes. And are, isn't there something coming out? Um, Chief Weber said that this summer we were going to look at, you know, parking boxes and, and red zones and up in those areas that you're talking about, Ruben. Isn't that coming out this summer, I think, or to look at? Yeah, I, 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 I'm not sure how he, I guess I'd have to talk to him to get a clarification on that. Okay. Um, I think that's the, the evacuation study that Mark just referred to. I think you're right. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Okay, thank you guys. Yep. You're welcome. Um, and also, you know, as you guys are working on these, uh, please feel free to call me if you have any questions or if you need any, any helpful hints. You know, for example, uh, for those of you that are not in the fire service, um, you know, if you go to Marin Map, for example, that's a wonderful tool to use. If you want to find out your, your fire hazard severity zones and you can click on to the area you're doing work in and it will come up. Um, and you can also use their maps um, to create your map for your, your project as well. So just let me know and I can help you with that. Lynn, um, does it, do the maps have to be off of Marin map or, or can you no. use different type of mapping software? You can use a different type of mapping software. I don't see an issue with that. Do you, Mark? No, I, I see no issue as long as the map is present. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And, it, and then map identifies the project. Copy. Thank you. Yeah, because there's different different map mapping programs to use. So um, do you guys have any other questions regarding the form? Yeah, Steve uh, Marcott from Bolinas has his hand up. Oh, I got to put my hand um, up. Actually, it's about the, uh, the road surface. Um, as you may or may not know, most of the roads in Bolinas are dirt. And if we um, do tree work or brush work on the side of one of our roads and we damage the roads um, with gouges and you know potholes and whatnot, or not potholes, but any damage that's done while we're clearing the roads, can we use some of the money to lay down some more gravel to resurface any damage that we've done? Or would that fall into road work? And, and I, I'm actually gonna um, ask that we kind of table this conversation right now only because not that it's a good conversation to have but our agenda item is on the work plan and not actually on the types of projects that are allowable or not allowable so we really need to stay on on topic uh, but Steve I can reach out to you and chat with you offline on this one okay thank you I, I gotta raise my hand because I don't have the feature on my iPad <laughs> So um, I have a couple of uh, comments um, uh, regarding the form. First of all, Lynn, thank you so much for doing that. Uh, really great job. Um, and um, I think that there, the concerns obviously is, is how the form is used. 
Um, and then the amount, uh, the number of forms dependent on projects, can projects be bundled um, into a single form? I think that um, we had a conversation, Todd, and I had a conversation today regarding the forms and I'll let him chime in a little bit about that as well. Um, the, the one thing though, form format, it being in a PDF, um, I think that um, maybe it should be looked at being a different electronic format, like a uh, Google form. The reason I say that is because in the PDF, it's once you put it in the PDF, you have to save it a specific way. Otherwise, it will uh, you could delete all that information unknowingly or, or by mistake. And also, whoever gets this form, if it has to be inputted into a database, they're going to have to retype the whole form. So maybe some thoughts towards that the format itself. Mm -hmm. And then also, as you talked about, Lynn, you had comments uh, or you said, if you have questions um, to, to contact you, maybe there could be a, a, a small two pager or something written in, you know, written guide, written instructions just for on these sections that might be helpful. Okay. You know, so that way we can kind of know filling out these particular sections, what specifically, you know, we want to do just to if so, if somebody else is filling out a form that hasn't done it before, um, then they'll know how to do that. That might be helpful. Um, and then Todd, I'll, I'll let you kind of talk about what we talked about earlier, if you want, or I can, it's up to you. Yeah, I, I, you know, we've, I've had several conversations in the last couple of days, and several weeks, just, just making sure that, that folks understand that, that uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I, I uh, a perfectly acceptable approach here is that, that, that uh, we're all managing different types of programs. Uh, you know, in, in, I don't think there's an expectation that, that every potential project within a program has one of these forms filled out and submitted. So, uh, you know, a good example, if, you're, if your agency is providing a def or looking to provide a defensible space uh, grant program, you're not going to provide one of these uh, forms for each grant that's administered by that program to a, an individual property owner that this is this is going to be uh, you know for that program so so uh, you know as I talked to other agencies um, I have had conversations with other folks that are planning to fill these out and, and submit projects for the year uh, it, it became clear that there was a, a variety of different approaches that were being looked at and, and uh, I hope that through all of our discussions that we've had, that, we're, that we're, you know we're adopting an approach that that uh, it consolidates where we can, simplifies the approach, so that this is a manageable project for the MWPA to 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 do it, and that we separate out separate out you know when there's an individual project that's being proposed that that very well or very likely warrants uh, you know an individual proposal here. But, but a lot of what I've talked to agencies about seems to be, you know, groupings of similar projects that fall into a program. It's the yeah. program that should get, the, uh, get the, the documentation, not the individual projects that might make up that program. That, that makes some sense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, uh, when we first got the form and I apologize if, uh, if I, you know, sounded a little uh, obtuse or whatever in some of my statements that I made in some emails that didn't mean it to come out that way, but I fill out, we fill out a ton of forms for not just MWPA, but we fill out a ton of forms for all of the other projects that we do in our organization and for grants. And it's like, it was just, it was, it seemed like it was a lot. It was like, I was filling out, a, we were going to have to fill out a grant form for every single project that we were going to do. And in our local mitigation, you know, we do a ton of projects. We, we, we do a lot of chipper projects. We do a lot of roadway clearing. We do a lot of, you know, trees removal. We do a ton of stuff. And if, and if we thought we were going to, if we have to fill out one of these forms for each one of those projects, that was going to be very cumbersome. And, and and it was going to take a lot. You know, we we're going to have to look at you know what how much staff time that was going to take to do that. But if we can bundle them, mm -hmm. then that that'll work because that will be we'll be able to say the description is we're going to do roadway clearing throughout the district. Estimated cost is X, and through contractors or something like that. 
and and that will that'll work. And then as far as the core functions goes, well, you know, we are only planning like I'm sure everybody else to only have a few core function um, submittals. Um, you know, during the fiscal year, most of it is local mitigation. And then, um, so yeah. I think, it, you know, for all of us, it's important to consider just how you're organizing it, your, your approach in general to your agency or your jurisdiction or your core zone, uh, you know, and, and what we want to be as efficient as possible in how we apply the funding that, that we're being provided from MWPA. We, we want to make the maximum impact on, on uh, uh, you know, potential wildfires. Uh, so so uh, there, there are a lot of efficiencies to be had throughout this system. So, uh, you know, I, 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 when, I, I don't want to look at it, at least from my perspective, that we're bundling projects, you know, or, 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 but we are managing programs that, that will execute a number of projects. They're all still going to need to go through the appropriate uh, environmental review, uh, you know, uh, so uh, I, I don't think there's any harm in that approach. The other thing for everybody to keep in mind, I think this really applies, you know, Fred, to what you're, you're saying is that with, this is not a competitive grant application. So we don't, there's no need to provide flowery language to impress a grant scoring committee. Uh, you know, we're not competing against ourselves here. This is, these are meant to, to show where we intend to apply funding. Uh, we need to clearly describe that the work we're proposing uh, you know, meets the guidelines that were set forth by the voters, and and, and we're, we're the goals we're going to accomplish, you know, are, are in line with the MWPA's mission. Um, but but ultimately, I think we can be real simple in our approach. We should be very specific and simple, and there's no need for the kind of flowery language that we would put down if we were applying for a FEMA federal grant here, where we need to stand out in a field of other competitive applications. It's just not what this is. And if I can add in, um, I, I totally support the, the bundling of the projects. Just make sure that uh, if you're bundling things like uh, um, vegetation clearing along multiple roadways, that there is still good descriptions of where the road, what roadways are being worked on and map segments for those. Because uh, some of the work that you're going to be putting in, in this form is going to um, catapult you into getting um, good work done on your categorical exemption and CEQA and notice of exemption form. So some of this information will be transferable straight into that. So it's, it's giving you a platform to work from. And Fred, I love the idea of using um, something along the lines of Google Sheets so mm -hmm. that uh, data entry in here will support the data entry for our metrics because these forms and these projects that are represented by these forms are really gonna lead into our metrics. And if we can capture it in one spot, instead of having to uh, do multiple entries, that'll save us so much time. Thank you. Mark, I have a quick question regarding that. Um, as we kind of approach this, can you give us a general overview of how an idea goes through this form and passes through the various committees before it turns into action or approval? Just an just a overarching kind of process. And I think um, Ruben will actually cover that in the work plans timeline agenda item, right? Ruben? Okay. That's correct. Okay. Perfect. Thank you guys. Great. That's how good of a question it is, Jesse. We already had it in the agenda. <laughs> nice. Um, okay, Lynn. Um, Mark, do you think it's appropriate this time to, for public comment on the first form or continue going? Uh, let's do that. Let's do public comment on the first form and then we can go to the categorical exemption form. Okay. Yeah. I go ahead at this point. I'd like to open it up for um, anyone in the public who has any comments on the form that was just presented. Uh, feel free to raise your hand. And if you're on your phone, I believe it's uh, star nine. And I'm looking for any raised hands and I don't see any. Okay. Seeing none, we'll uh, bring it back to the committee. Um, Lynn. The floor okay. Is good. Um, so I'm just going to go down to the second page of the, the project form, and this is the section. This is not the categorical exemption form. This is just part of the project form, which is this little list here uh, that describes your vegetation project. Um, this is a list that was um, asked for by uh, the ESP committee um, and the FERN group. Um, and then I went over it with um, Mark, what was her name? Megan. Megan and then um, Megan and then Sabrina from Remy Moose Manley. Right. Um, so this is a, a questionnaire that is not um, anything new or out of the ordinary. 
Um, and if you are in the process, uh, let's say, for example, you have not completed your environmental compliance yet, which most of us probably have not at this point because these are projects that are going to be for 2021. So you just may want to describe, for example, um, that you're going to hire an environmental uh, consultant to do your environmental compliance and keep it at that. And, or if you've already started, just what stage are you at? But this is basic stuff, you know, your total acreage project footprint, um, approximate acreage of the project service disturbance, uh, what type of equipment are you gonna be using for your project? Uh, you know, chainsaws, chippers, masticators, et cetera. Um, and, you know, once again, if you're just gonna be pulling broom, then just put, you know, no mechanical equipment, just broom pullers. Um, and then, you know, is a proposed project located on an existing road? Most of ours will be. Um, and um, is there gonna be any off-road travel required? Um, and will there be any temporary roads developed? Probably not, so just put no. Um, and then also, if you don't know, for example, this section, what is the distance in feet from live stream wetlands or other special site characteristics? You can actually go to Marin map and, and add that layer to your map and you can, you can actually see how far your, your project is from a stream or wetland. Now, if you're working with an environmental consultant, they will also um, have that in their assessment for you as well. They're very detailed detailed in that way. Um, and then your biological and or archeological aspects been addressed. Um, and you know, for that question, you would just add, if you're working with your consultant, that it will be in that report. Um, types of vegetation communities. Um, that also, I believe you can pull up from Marin map. Um, and if you don't know, I would check with your consultant. Um, the types of months um, that you want to perform the treatment. Um, so, you know, if it's during nesting season um, and or if you're going to be doing your work between September and February, I, you know, just put those, those approximate um, times. Uh, seasonal constraints, we have many of those, nesting season, fire season, and of course our weather and uh, the time of day. And then if it's prescribed burning, um, have you created a smoke management um, plan and or acquired your permits? And then at the bottom, you just attach your map. Okay, so I'll pull up the categorical exemption form. And they actually shortened this form quite a bit. Um, the CAL FIRE form uh, was actually much longer so, and, and this form is, I uh, have quite a few pages just for your, your photographs in there. But I'll start from the beginning here. And Lynn, if I can add on a little bit about the difference between the CAL FIRE form and the notice of exemption form is that um, even in the CAL FIRE VTP treatable landscape, if you have a project that is uh, applicable for a notice of exemption, you don't have to go through the CAL FIRE checklist. It's for the projects that are not um, available to a notice of exemption that you would go through the more comprehensive CAL FIRE checklist. Right. So, uh, so basically you have your project description and the environmental setting, describe the project activities, including any continuing or long-term maintenance after initial project activities, project site and its surroundings and its location and the environmental settings. So, you know, you just, you want to just take the information if you have it already and or if you can um, get that information from your environmental consultant. Um, and then your justification for the use of a, a categorical exemption. And I could send you some examples of these too. I think that might be helpful. And, um, and it, they added a section here kind of explaining each section here. And Lynn, that, that section was added by Remy Moose Manley at my request, just because right. so many of us are new at uh, this type of work and having the information right at our fingertips rather than having digging in, um, going to dig it up, I thought it was gonna be beneficial. Right. 
And, you know, also you may want to, um, so this form, I, I'm not sure, do we want people to fill out this form when they turn in their project work or this form should be available? I would, for, the, for a core project, I would make it available once, um, I, I, don't have, I don't have an expectation that it would be filled out for core projects. Okay. This would be a form that MWPA staff uh, through our, our consultant would be filling this out. Okay. And then if it's a local mitigation project, then this would be a form that the agency would fill out. Okay. Or their consultant. Yeah. And, I, and also I think that um, this form probably would be filled out not when we turn everything in, but before we begin any work. Correct. And then this will be available on the MWPA website at some point. If Correct. anybody wanted to um, take a look at it. Put that so, in your notes, notes, Fred. Those, those two statements are the most important thing we'll come away with here for as far as making sure we get everything done on time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, you don't have to fill out this form right away, but you will have to fill it out before before you do any ground disturbing work, all your environmental compliance should be complete. And this is part of it. So any questions? And one thing I forgot, I, I more, more of a, um, an add on Lynn and yeah. what I forgot to include in my um, in, uh, executive officers report is that we, the, the application period for our environmental firms uh, for our request for proposal closed March 31st. We received two applications. Um, both are phenomenal firms. And I um, anticipate uh, signing a contract with one of the firms in May. Okay. And they have both expressed that they will be extending services and fees to all the local member agencies. Each agency for the most part should have purchasing guidelines that allow them to bid, piggyback on the competitively bid process that MWPA already did so that they will not have to go through their own competitive process. Okay, that's helpful. And Mark, just to confirm, so if, if, if we have something that needs to go through CEQA, if it's a core project and we, um, we don't know, if we put it in, if we submit for the core project, then the MWPA consultant will look at it and tell us whether or not it's needs CEQA and what form of CEQA it's going to need or environmental impact. So yes, if it if it's a core project, then it's going to be MWPA staff working with the local agency that's going to lead. So MWPA will be the lead agency in reaching out for contracting, reaching out for environmental compliance. So we will be doing that work in conjunction, uh, keeping close tabs with the agency that has requested that core project. Whereas a local mitigation project, then the lead, the lead agency is that local agency. And could we uh, contract with that firm if we wanted to, to use them for that? If we Yes, that, is, that was the intent. Okay, awesome. Any other questions? Thank you, Lynn, for putting all this together. I know it was a huge amount of work. Absolutely. Oh, so, and then if we want to, um, do we want to do we want to try to create Google Sheets, or or would that be easier? I think we. Uh, my my suggestion is considering um, where we are in the process. So we run with the PDFs this year and transition to Google Sheets next year. Okay. Okay. Has any of you started filling out these forms besides Todd? Uh, yeah, we did one big one, but the form changed, so we're gonna fill it back out again. <laughs> well, uh, you should just be able to cut and paste because nothing nothing there weren't any large changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I'm, it's fine. <laughs> I think we did it in Word, so it's just gonna be a cut and paste into the- Oh yeah, and, you know, and I, I have always done things in Word first and then just cut and pasted. Yeah. And I, I was helping Rich with that. And so he sent me over all his projects and I did some sample, sample um, forms for him. And it was fairly easy. Yeah, it helps with those of us who are spelling challenged. To do it that way.
Do we have any uh, further questions for Lynn from the group? Seeing none, um, let's go ahead and open up for public comment and or questions. No, that wouldn't be questions, it would be comments from uh, the public regarding the CEQA categorical exemption form. And I'm looking for any raised hands. And for those that are on the phone, you can raise your hand with star nine. And I do not see any raised hands. Okay. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and bring it back to the committee. Um, thank you, Lynn. Thank you very much. Those are good forms. And, um, you know, once again, if you guys have any questions, um, call me. Um, I think most of you have my cell number and I can walk you through it. But I think, I think that you guys will do just great. <laughs> nice, thank you, Lynn. Um, You're welcome. Great, great work on the forum. Um, I know it was a lot of uh, staff hours that went into it um, over the last several weeks and probably some weekends. So definitely thank you for uh, stepping up and taking the lead on it. You're welcome. Much appreciate it. Thank you, Lynn. Um, okay, we'll move on to the next item, which was the, project plans and work form. Um, so I sent out a staff report as part of the agenda packet that kind of talked about the, basically the, where MWPA came from and where their timelines are for budget um, and who we answer to. So basically the way it's set up, it's your um, board of directors um, followed by your operations committee underneath that and then followed by the technical advisory committee. So we answer to the operations committee. So the goal is for us to um, have our work plans um, completed and submitted for the first round of review by the operations committee. So this kind of goes into your question, Jesse, is the operations committee um, is broken. They broke it down into a small ad hoc ops committee that does the initial review of your core projects. So for example, say if you have a core project that you're doing um, roadside fuels reduction and evacuation route improvements, you submit it, you've completed all your forms, it's gonna most likely from talking to uh, Chief Tyler, it's gonna get approved. Um, there may be some items, like for example, someone may submit an obscure um, request for a, op for a core project, uh, something that really they need to have some discussion about so that may be discussed amongst the group and that either may either get approved or not approved or brought back to the committee for further uh, evaluation and discussion and maybe some massaging. They may say, no, you know, that doesn't meet the budget and we're not gonna approve it. Or they may say, you know, a project, like say for example, um, Sam Rafael was asking about um, an air burner, an air curtain that is designed to um, do large masses of biomass and burn it to a point where it comes out fairly clean into the environment. Um, one of those projects may get looked at and say, yeah, you know, this is a good project for the entire core area. And so, you know what, we're gonna take that off the top and fund it because it's a piece of equipment. And then they may take all of our work plans back down to where we may have to adjust our budgets a little bit. So, so those are kind of some of the projects coming in. Someone else may come in. I know we've got a request from an outside agency um, to potentially fund um, a two-year position at the UC Master Gardeners. If that ends up getting approved, that'll come off the top for all of the op areas. And so all of our budgets may have to get adjusted based on that. So those are some of the kind of the changes that the small ad hoc committee will make. And But from what I'm understanding is most of our core projects, if they fit, and meet the guidelines that were approved by the voters for measure C are gonna get approved as long as we submit all the documentation. Um, and then what the ad hoc committee will take those projects and then take them up to the full operational committee for approval. And then from there, once that's approved, they will take it up to the board of directors for um, full uh, MWPA funding and approval. Um, does that seem about right, Mark? Do I explain it? Yeah. and. Um... I, I do want to talk to you about having um, after, just prior to submission from the advisory technical committee to the operations committee to have your committee have a, a public meeting where all the projects are listed. You may not vet every single one of the projects, 
but this allows us to get an early viewing to our, our partners and stakeholders prior to the operations committee and allow for a public input on those. Um, and so what you're recommending is that we bring those, like for example, I believe uh, Chief Tyler and the Ops Committee is looking at a, an ad hoc meeting on the 27th. Correct. So it would uh, behoove us for us to have a meeting maybe that Thursday before. I, I, that would be optimal and it wouldn't necessarily be one where you need to discuss every single project but at least every single project's included in the agenda with the proposal form. And so that'll allow for public comment from our stakeholders and partners. Okay. Um, how much time do we need to agendize the projects? Uh, three days. Three days. So that, um, so if we have a meeting on the 22nd, that puts us agendized and submitted on the 19th, which basically puts us having our projects completed in a, format on the forms by uh, hopefully the end of business on the 16th, which is next Friday. I know that's kind of a tight window and timeline. If yeah. we were to push that meeting to um, the Monday prior to, so Monday the 26th could be an option for you as well. Okay, we can do that. Um, so if we have, so we can, you have to agendize it on the 26th. I would yeah. need to agendize the 23rd, which I believe is a, is that a Friday? Okay, so we agendize the 23rd, but bring the work plans in, submitted, ready to roll on the 26th? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that means if I can have those by noon on the 26th, that way we can I can gather them all together and then present them to um, Chief Tyler so at least he can have them uh, and start looking at them. Ruben, just for clarity, these are for the core projects only, not local projects, correct? Um, it's my understanding we're submitting everything. And uh, local and DSpace stuff is more informational where we're supplying, hey, we're gonna be doing um, 50 miles of emergency evacuation roadways on roadway A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And that'll be part of say your local mitigation. Or you may go, hey, your program on local mitigation may be we're providing home hardening grants and provide all the documentation on that. Thank you. Um, any questions regarding the timeline? Yeah, and so just to clarify with that, like we have to get all of our bids from these contractors in order to put onto these forms before that date, before it mm -hmm. goes. No, not necessarily 100% bid, but you know what your budget is yeah. for, um, for what you're going to do. Um, so you basically all your core projects are kind of be broken up into what money is allowed within that budget. Okay. Um, like for example, we may do uh, defensible space um, home grants and we may include an entire map of the town of Corte Madera's WUI as a defensible space uh, matching grants and then um, provide what our local mitigation dollar amount is. So it may be whatever is uh, given to Bolinas, you would say, hey, uh, fuels mitigation, defensible space of 100% or 100 feet around homes, um, home grants for D space and veg removal. And we'll throw a theoretical number out there of 100,000 of what you're allotted. And that's what you're putting into that plan. And then at that point at the local and you are then responsible for providing the environmental checklist for those projects if needed. And then um, just managing your projects and providing receipts at the end so that way MWPA can audit and take a look at to make sure you're using the funds appropriately. Copy, thank you. And Jesse, just to help out if it helps any because we've been doing the roadway stuff and the chipper stuff for a long time. It's you know, you just basically take the number of streets that you're going to do and you just say, you know, how many days per street and you just, you know, multiply that by, um, we use 1600 is because that's typical one day for us for a chipper. And then it's just a rough estimate, but it's somewhat close, believe it or not, it works out being pretty close. So cool. Thank you. Um, any other questions on the timeline there and the way the approval process is going to go? 
Okay, we'll go ahead and uh, open up to public comments um, regarding the timelines and uh, submittal of the work plans. And again, I'm looking for any raised hands and don't see any. Okay, seeing none, we'll go ahead and bring it back to the committee. Um, so that's pretty much the timelines that we have. And like I said, it's uh, the goal is for us to take it before the full operational committee in May. So that way MWPA, so that way they can then formalize the projects and then take it before the full MWPA board of directors for their 2021-22 budget approvals. Um, all right, moving down the agenda, are there um, any additional comments or informational for Run the Horn? Seeing none, uh, we'll move on to uh, item number eight. Are there any um, um, committee members that will request any future agenda items? Seeing none. Um, let's see, I will uh, work with Mark and we'll try to put a, a meeting schedule out for us so we can at least discuss these um, items. Hey Ruben, going, just, yeah. just going back over the agenda itself, um, meeting minutes, uh, approval of meeting minutes, is that, do we need to add that to the agenda or? We didn't do it this time, but I'm not I'll sure. Have, I'll have the, the, the I'll have that on the next agenda. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll didn't. put that on for the next one for our last meeting in this meeting. Okay. Um, okay. Seeing um, anything else, can we have a motion to adjourn? So move. Fred, second. Adjourn. Second by Larry. Um, thank you, everyone. I appreciate um, everyone getting together on such short notice. And we'll keep everybody posted. Once again, continue working with your partners within your op area and anyone within surrounding jurisdictional op areas. That way we can maximize um, our efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. Great seeing you, Bob. That's Thank clear. you very much, Mark. <laughs> Good job, Ruben. <laughs> you too, Todd and Lynn. <laughs> <laughs>